this video, we're going to talk about filing a motion for exclusive use of the house while your divorce is pending. So in Connecticut, when, when a divorce is filed, the automatic orders go in, into effect. And one of the automatic orders is that you can't keep your spouse out of the house. So you can't lock, lock, you know, if you file for divorce, you can't lock your wife out of the house. That would be considered a violation of the automatic orders. It would also be considered a crime in Connecticut. It would be criminal lockout. So you certainly can't do that. So the only ways to get somebody out of the house are through filing a motion for exclusive use of the house in family court or filing a restraining order. But we're not we're not going to talk about filing a restraining order today. We're going to talk about filing a motion for exclusive use. So I'm going to share my screen to show you the statutes um, that allow for this. So. 46B-83 says the court may also award exclusive use of the family home or any other dwelling unit, which is available for use as a residence pendente lite, so during litigation, to either of the parties as is just and equitable without regard to the respective interests of the parties in the property. So what that last part means is that it does not matter whose name the property is in for the court to award exclusive use. So a house could be in a husband's name, but the court could still kick the husband out of the house and award exclusive use to the wife. Um, so that's the statute that allows for exclusive use. And then practice book section 25-25 dictates what you have to put in a motion for exclusive use. So it says that each motion, motion for exclusive possession shall state the nature of the property, whether it is a rental property or owned by the parties, or owned by the parties or one of them, the length of tenancy or ownership of each party, the current family members residing therein, and the grounds upon which the moving party seeks exclusive possession. So you first have to state the nature of the property. So the address of the property, whether it's a single family home, three family home, you know, apartment, condo, et cetera, whether it's a rental property or owned by the parties, the length of how, how long you've owned it, or, you know, maybe husband owned it solely for three years, and then the parties owned it jointly for seven years after that, for example. Um, the current family members residing within the property. Um, so, you know, usually it'll be plaintiff, defendant, and the minor children, if there are any. And then the grounds upon which the moving party seeks exclusive possession. So the reason that you're asking for exclusive use of the house. So that's everything that has to be included in the motion. So I'm going to show you a sample motion here. Um, so you're just gonna caption it motion for exclusive possession, pendente lite. And then you put pursuant to Connecticut practice book section 25-25 and Connecticut general statutes, statutes section 46B-83. Those are the two, uh, the statute and the practice book section I just showed you. The plaintiff moves the court for exclusive possession of the marital residence located at, and then put the address. And this could obviously be reversed where it's the defendant asking, you know, the defendant asking for exclusive possession. So here you're gonna put who lives in the residence. Um, this is kind of showing the history of who owned it for how long. Um, if it's a rental, you obviously wouldn't have ownership. You'd have how long the lease has been in effect. And then you're gonna put the grounds for why you're seeking exclusive possession of the house. So here we just put that the defendant continually harasses and berates the plaintiff in the presence of the minor children. It's in the best interest of the children in both parties for the plaintiff to have exclusive possession of the family home. The defendant has sufficient financial resources to secure housing, and he also has family in the area with whom he could stay. So you can really flesh this section out and uh, you know just, you can elaborate on why you're asking for exclusive use of the house. So that's logistically how the, how the motion is drafted. And obviously you file it after that. Now, the reality on these motions for exclusive use is that it's extremely difficult to have a motion for exclusive use granted. Um, there are some examples where they will be granted. If for example, you know, prior to a divorce or, at some point during, while the divorce is pending, one of the parties moves out of the house. So if you know wife is living in the house and her husband isn't living there, 
it's pretty likely that the court's going to grant the wife exclusive use if she's living at the house, particularly if, you know, husband's showing up to, you know, clean the pool or do some other maintenance. You know, if he shows up unannounced for no good reason, it's an annoyance to the wife or, you know, it could be either way, you know, wife may be moved out and husband is in the house. In that situation, it's it's really not good for anybody for one of them to just show up unannounced. So the court would be likely to grant exclusive use. Or if there's, you know, high conflict between two individuals and, you know, it's really not good. It, you know, it has to be pretty egregious and extreme. And the court may grant exclusive use to one of the parties, particularly if there are children at the house. You know, obviously the courts don't want kids put in the middle of conflict between two parents. So if there's children in the house and one of the, you know, there's plenty of financial resources for one of the individuals to go get another apartment or um, or they have family members in the area with whom they can live. In that situation, it's it's pretty likely, you know, I wouldn't say it's pretty likely, but it's, it's more likely for a court to grant exclusive use to one of the parties. But if it's your everyday, you know, run of the mill, obviously in divorce cases, there's, you know, people usually aren't getting along particularly well. If it's, but if it's regular bickering and arguing that comes, you know, unfortunately often comes with divorce, it's not going to rise to the level of the court ordering one of the parties out of the house. It's just kind of the reality of the situation. So those are kind of the basics on filing a motion for exclusive use.